Welcome to What is Truth, brought to you by the Southern New Mexico Church of God in Las Cruces, New Mexico. What is Truth is a weekly program which seeks to focus our attention on the truth of God's Word. Now, with this week's lesson, here's Pastor Meyer Stahl. Welcome to the program. Today's question is, what is the Day of Atonement? The Jews call it Yom Kippur. Now, last week we talked about the Feast of Trumpets, which the Jews call Rosh Hashanah. So these two holy days, Jews all over the world keep them. Also, some churches of God keep these holy days. We're going to look into the Bible. We're going to understand what it is that, that these holy days represent. Now, we know the Feast of Trumpets represents the return of Jesus Christ. If you missed last week's program, please send away for a DVD. We'll be happy to send it to you for free. We never charge for DVDs, we never charge for literature, any literature that you would want to order. It is absolutely free. Well, today we're offering two very important booklets. What kind of faith is required for salvation? The first booklet. And at the bottom it says, do you know millions who actually believe in Jesus Christ have no salvation at all because they trust in the wrong kind of faith. Now the second booklet is called What Do You Mean Salvation? And at the bottom of that booklet it says, Do you realize not one in a hundred knows what it is, how to get it when you receive it? Don't be too sure you do. Here, once and for all, is the truth made so plain you will really understand it. We never ask the public for money. Whenever you call, we will just take down your name, your address, drop it in the mail, and you'll receive it in a few days. Read it along with your Bible. Never read any booklets except you read them along with your Bible to make sure they're biblically correct. So we're going to the Bible today. We're going to Leviticus chapter 23. Now, we're, we're in Leviticus chapter 23, and we're going to start in verse 27. And here it says, right here it says, also on the 10th day of the seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation unto you, and you shall afflict your souls and offer an, an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Well, we don't do that anymore because there's no temple, there's no high priest, but the rest is still incumbent upon us. Verse 28. And you shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. And verse 29 says, For whatever soul it be that shall not be afflicted means fast. You you need to fast in that day. In that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. And whatever soul it be that does any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. You shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings, it shall be a Sabbath of rest, and you shall afflict your souls. That means you shall fast. 
in the ninth day of the month. So at, at even. So at sundown, uh, on the 29th, the 29th of September, a Friday evening at sundown, we start fasting. And from even unto even shall you celebrate your Sabbath. And that goes till Saturday sundown. From Friday sundown to Saturday sundown on the 30th, we will fast. Well, let's, let's look here at the, at the very beginning of Levit Leviticus 23, and we find that these are not the holy days of the Jews. Let's look here at verse 4. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations which you shall proclaim in their seasons. Notice that. These are the feasts of the Lord. Doesn't say they're the feasts of the Jews. They belong to the Lord. Now, let's go back to Leviticus chapter 16. Let's understand this holy day, this day of fasting. Uh, this day is called Yom Kippur in Hebrew. And uh, it means day of fasting. And we're looking at now at Leviticus chapter 16, verse 2. We need to come to an understanding of what this is talking about. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron your brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not. He could only come in on one day, and that was the Day of Atonement. That's the only day he could come in. For I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. So that's what he was told to do. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. So these were the offerings that took place in those days. He shall put on the holy linen coat. He shall have linen breeches upon his flesh and shall be girded with a linen girdle and the linen mitre shall he be attired. These are holy garments. Therefore shall he wash his flesh in water and so put them on. So he, was, he had to do this. It was very important that he did it God's way. And he shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel, two kids of the goats. It could be goats or lambs. For a sin offering, and one ram for a burnt offering. Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and make an atonement for himself and for his house. Now here's the key to this day of atonement. He shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him and let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. Now we're going to stop here for a moment and I'm going to explain that. So there's two goats. One is the sin offering for all the people. That represents Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ died for all the people, for you, for me, for everyone. Now the second goat is let go into the wilderness. We're going to understand what the second goat represents, or who, rather, who the second goat represents. So let's just go back to Leviticus chapter 16. And here we're at verse 10. 
Uh, we did verse 10. We're on to verse 15 now. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people. So this first goat was for the sins of the people. That represents Jesus Christ dying for you and me. And bring his blood within the veil. And do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock. And sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. And he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of the, all their transgressions and all their sins. And so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remains among them in the midst of their uncleanness. Now we're going to go to Revelation chapter 20. We're going to learn who the goat, uh, the second goat represents. In chapter 20, the second goat is taken away into the wilderness and left there. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season. Now we're going to stop here for a moment. The second goat represented Satan. The second goat was taken away into the wilderness and he was left out there to die. And, the, and that represents Satan, who's locked up in this bottomless pit. He's chained up that he could deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. Now let's look at verse 4. We're here in chapter 20, and we're looking at verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. Now this beheading is going on today. The ISIS out there in the Mideast are beheading Christians. And for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads. And this is yet future tense. This is yet future. These are people who accept the mark 666 on their right hand or their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So while Satan's all locked up, Jesus Christ is ruling on this earth with the saints for 1,000 years. That's incredible. Now, if you look down at the week, we have a seven-day week. Every nation in this world has a seven-day week. That was put into place by, G by God when he says six days, man works, the seventh he rests. And as the Sabbath, he should rest on the Sabbath day. So the, we have six millennial days. The, the uh, apostle Peter said, one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. So we're going to have a period of 6,000 years of man's work. Man could choose his own governments, his own religions. He could choose his own educational systems, his own banking systems, his own laws. And basically, God has hands off and he lets man do his thing. But at the end of 6,000 years, 
starting the 7,000 years, man will rest and God will work. So God is going to work for that 1,000 year period and there's going to be a contrast. 6,000 years of man's inhumanity to man. Look at where we're at today. And 1,000 years of God's rule on this earth. Now, please don't go away. We will be right back after this short intermission. Friend, do you remember when it felt good to withdraw your cash from the bank to expand a business, go on vacation, or buy a new car? Well, today, withdrawing your own cash has become a very risky business. According to the secret war, banks are now required to spy on us for the government and then report any suspicious or unusual behavior. I suggest you get the secret war free. Call the number on your screen or visit online. Hey, Grandpa, come play catch. Uh, well... Don't you want to play catch with me? I want to, but my back doesn't. It hurts so bad I can barely... Oh. Has this ever happened to you? You could qualify for a pain-relieving back brace at little or no cost to you. Call the Pain Relief Hotline now. Catch it! Wow, Grandpa, it's going so high. Call the Pain Relief Hotline now to get your pain-relieving back brace. Okay, we're back now. If you tuned in late, we're talking about what is the Day of Atonement. Uh, the Jews call it Yom Kippur, and uh, they celebrate that day and a day that took place last week uh, called, called Rosh Hashanah which is the day of trumpets. So they celebrate both of these days. These days are important to the Jews. They're also important to some of the churches of God. And some of the churches of God keep these days, they celebrate them, and they fast on the Day of Atonement. Now the Day of Atonement this year comes out on September 30th. That's Saturday, September 30th. And those who are going to fast will start fasting Friday at sunset, as the sun sets Friday, and they will continue fasting until Saturday sunset, a 24-hour period. So we're back in the Bible. We're at Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. We're talking about the second, uh, the second a lamb or the second uh, second lamb uh, Revelation 12 verse 9 and here it says or a second goat and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceives the whole world Satan deceives the whole world. The whole world doesn't understand that they're being deceived. A deceived person doesn't know they're being deceived or else they wouldn't be deceived. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. No wonder we have so much trouble, so many problems today because Satan is here, he's here on the earth, his angels, the demons, are with him, 
and they're causing all kinds of trouble, wars, and man's inhumanity to man. They're going full force, and we're coming to the end of the age. Jesus Christ was asked in Matthew chapter 24, what would be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? And he gave that examples, what would be the signs. We're going back to the book of, of Romans, Romans chapter 3. Let's go to Romans chapter 3, and we're looking at verse 23. And it says here, verse 23, for all have sinned. That's everybody, you, me, everyone. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Being justifi justified freely by his grace. We're justified by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation, a sacrifice through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. Now, I want you to notice that. These are past sins. These are not future sins. They're past sins. We need to repent of those sins that are past through the forbearance of God to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believes in Jesus. All right. Now, we're looking at Romans. We're, we're going to drop down to verse 30. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision. That's the Jews. By faith and the uncircumcision through faith. Now, a lot of people say that the law is done away with. Now, let's ask the question. Paul asked the question, do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yes, we establish the law. Why did Paul say that? Why did Paul say we established the law? Because if you break God's law, you're sinning. What are you repenting about? You would be repenting about breaking God's law. That's exactly what you would be repenting about. Why then would you have the right to break his law? Let's go to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, and we'll start in verse 1. Romans 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may, ab may abound? God forbid! How shall we, who are dead to sin, live any longer therein? Okay. Know you not that so many of us, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. We were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. We're going to end right there. We're, we're, you are all invited to join us on the Day of Atonement on Saturday September 30th at the meeting room at 1701 East Missouri. And we'll also be there on Saturday at 1 o'clock. We will be there at, at Saturday the 30th at 12 o'clock. But for our interactive Bible study, we hold that at 1 o'clock on Saturdays, all Saturdays. Why don't you send away for these two very important booklets, What Do You Mean, Salvation, and the second booklet, What Kind of Faith is Required for Salvation. Just call the number that you see on the screen. 
We'll be happy to send them out to you. They're absolutely free. You can have a DVD of this program today. You can have one at la of last week's if you missed it. You can have both of them for free. We have nothing to sell. We never ask the public for money. Until next time, this is Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God saying goodbye, my friends. You have been listening to What is Truth with Pastor Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God located in Las Cruces, New Mexico. For copies of today's lesson or for more information, call area code 575-650-7359. That's 575-650-7359. Join us next week at this same time for another edition of What is Truth? Until next week, we wish you God's richest blessings.